And we are live. All right, everybody, you guys know what it is. The one and the only, the American Cholo Podcast, broadcasting live and directly from North Hollywood, California. Of course, my name is Gil, and I am the American Cholo. And we have a recurring guest here. It's been a while. I think we put him on the super on the trackway to superstardom. Yeah, superstardom, <laughs> homie. Oh, the one and the only, Young Beast Comedy, Victor Zapata. Striking, What's striking, good? I was striking much love and respect to everybody right here. Had to bring it back to the American Cholo where it all started. Where it all me? began. Well, let, let, well let's, get, let, let's give credit where credit is due. It all started from Incredible Javier. Shout out to Incredible exactly. Javier. Shout out to Incredible Javier. And then uh, I saw you on Incredible Javier, and I was like, damn, that's an amazing fucking story, bro. I, I need to get you on. And, yeah. and sure enough, we did our thing. And after that, it seemed like you got a lot of traction. And, you know, you've been doing your thing now. What's yeah. going on? Uh, just everything. I've been doing the whole comedy thing, wrote my book. Um, just living it. Just living, living you know, life as best I could. You know what I mean? So, how much has things changed since you know since? You um, as far as from when I started, I mean, obviously the whole COVID thing finished. Um, work in and out of work, but I mean, I mean, I never lost sight of what really mattered to me was which my was my dream. You know, right? The and um, it took me actually a long time to finish my book. It took me, a, you know, I honestly thought I could knock it out like in thirty days, but it actually took me a whole year. Because um, when when you uh, live a traumatic experience like right. that, it's, it takes you back. You have to you relive it and you go back to that day, you know. So it's like if you relive that fight, you relive that moment, you know, you're just like in the moment. So it took me a while. It took me a while to finish it. But, I mean, I'm happy with the results. I mean, we've sold uh, over a thousand copies on yeah, Amazon. Congratulations. Kindle. Oh, yeah. And um, paperbacks, we self-published and we've already sold out like three, four times. This is my... Four time that's dope. Publishing, yeah. You, you got Johnny Lowe said, I need a signed copy of yeah. the book, my boy. Let me know what's up. Just shoot me a anybody who's interested in getting a, a copy of the book, shoot me a DM uh, on Instagram or Facebook, and I'm signing the first one like 500 copies. No, babe, I'm doing 500. I have to have no more. That's it, homie, yeah, because you lose traction, you know. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Hey. You, should, you should probably only do like about 100. Fool. Yeah, I already did 250. Oh, really? 250 signed. I'm not signing all of them, just here and there, you know. Uh, have you done any where you when you set up shop and people come and yeah yeah we sold out a bunch of times like uh, at my shows I'm always taking the book oh you know? oh that's what's up that's so right I'm making money from the show and the book you know and a lot of people are knocking it out and they'll ask me like you know like where I got the storyline I was like this is my life real it, life what, what let's, happened let's put that let's put the book up there homeboy. Let's put the book up there. Eric, shout out to all the homies from North Hollywood. You know what it is, carnal. Much love and respect. There you go. What's Look. cracking? What's cracking? Damn, that fool even had pear, carnal. Oh, yeah. What's up with that guy? Who, who who was that guy right there, B? That was me right there. I was 16 years old. I had just became Fima Raza, fresh out of Nixon right there. It's fresh out of Nixon, yeah. huh? And I was healthy, dude. I was healthy. 16 years old. I went to Hawaii when I was 12. That was already I was 16. So I was already feeding my rasa. Because the thing is, when you go to the hole, they don't let you cut your hair. They don't let you shave. Nothing, right? Oh, is that where you came so, out with the long yeah, hair like that? Yeah, I had the long ass hair. It was like a whole year I was in Nixon. Oh, shit. Yeah. But Nixon was like the permanent lockup. So I was there for a whole year. But the, I mean, the cops are cool. The more you're there, the more recurring. They're like, oh, this fool's cool. He's just doing his thing, you know? So how was the lockup in Nixon? Was it- uh, L- N- Nixon. So it was it was Taft. Taft was like... Like fucked up because it was like where a lot of the J cats were at. A lot of fools were like who banging, banging on the doors. And the thing about the beds where one bed was connected to the other bed. So if the vato next door to you was like banging on the bed, you couldn't sleep. Oh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Get what you're you on like about. sleep status, and it was it was fucked up. You didn't want to go to town. It was all the all the fucked up kids. All exactly, the exactly all the fucked up fools. So if you really wanted to do your time and you had to do a, a lockup program, you want to go to Nixon. But and Taft, what Taft was also like a lockup program? Taft was like... Uh, like yeah, a 5150 lockup. 5150, but all, they would keep you there for like 30 days, 60 days, conquers. 90 days, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, Nixon was when, they, when you're going to stay for either more than 90 days or like a year. There was fools that were there for a while. Yeah. And then in Nixon, you could have a celly. In Taft, you couldn't. Okay. In Taft, it was single man sales, and it was small as hell, man. What did what, what, uh, what you do to end up going to Nixon for? for a program? I ended up go- So when I went to a uh, Nixon program was because... um. I had just got out of Taft, and they brought me up Firme Raza. And um, so you, when you go, when you gr- come back Firme, you have to announce it to everybody, right? Okay. So they brought me up Firme. And the way they do it is like a voting system. They'll be like, hey, you know what? Does anybody got a problem with bringing up Beaver from our side bowling Firme? And there was only one fool that said Chalice, which was from 18. And I was like, that's cool. We'll catch that fade, fool. Like, don't even trip. I already got like 13 votes. I mean, like, I'm feeding me, right? So he's like, yeah, don't trip. Boom. I was like, all right, you already know. Like, he was, we were cool, but yeah, yeah. right? that's kind of weird, right? Yeah, it's weird, fool. <laughs> it was like the first time I, w- I was like introduced to the whole voting system, fool. So I go back to uh, Jackson. And you know, one thing I never understood was why were they were sending me back to the same cottage, fool? 
I never went to another cottage except Jackson, which was the worst cottage there. Oh, it was one of the worst it, ones. Oh, that, that was. Jackson was known for being active. Notorious for that. Notorious, fool. So I go, they see me, and everybody's like, oh, shit, oh, there's that full beaver. Because, you know, prior to that, I had got iced and all that all shit, this shit went through the- So supposedly, I was never going to come back feeding, man. But I go to the TV, and like I said, you, you couldn't be level on just the TV. So I go to the TV, and I was like, turn it off. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? I used beer from Northside Bowling, and I'm fucking feeding my rasa. I'm putting my, I'm putting my flag down, Yeah, bro. and everybody's like, what the fuck? And as soon as that happened, that fool from Puente, which was like my arch nemesis. Of course, say, yes. Right? He gets up, he's like, fuck that. You live as fuck. So we get down right to the day room, block it up. Boom, 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 boom. We get down. This fool is already 18. I'm 16, right? Right. So technically, he's an adult. So they're like, let's get rid of this motherfucker. He's on some bullshit. They throw him to the lockup, but two of his homies stay there. Some other fool from a Cathedral City and another fool from San Diego, right? So these fools are like, hey, you got down my ramfla, like I need that fade. And I was like, that's fine. I'm not tripping. Let's run it. Yeah, let's run it. So me and that fool get down, boom, 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 boom. The same day, we get down, they take me to the infirmary. I come back, he comes back. So I'm like, okay, you know, maybe I'll fight the other guy tomorrow. <laughs> Hell no. The sp- they haven't even changed shifts, homie. Oh. And that fool gets up from San Diego. He's like, hey, fool, I need that shit. And I was like, what the fuck? They haven't even changed uh, bro. shifts. So I hit that. I hit the next one, dude. I get him up, and then the staff's like, "Get this motherfucker out of here, dude." They shoot me to Nixon, and they're like, "Hey, you know what?" Cause the gang coordinator, he was like supposedly the one keeping the peace. Allegedly, was, yeah, allegedly. But he was on some bullshit too. <laughs> he was like, "What's going on, man? You just got a lock up from Taft, and you're already getting into shit." Right. So obviously, I'm never. I'm not gonna snitch. There was a lot of fools that were like straight dry snitching, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because. If they would, the way it worked was if I came up to you and I said, you know, like you're from North Hollywood, I'm from 18, and I say, hey, you know what, I don't want no problems with you, dog. But if they're saying I don't want problems, so the way it worked in Hawaii was if we fought, that write up would be on you. Oh, because you said you exactly, dude. So they were literally working the system like that, dog. So all my enemies, I'm telling you, like they we, all were signing shit. Yeah, and they were, and them, they were blaming on you. I swear to God, when I, when those fools, when <laughs> when when all the fools, dude, they were like when I. First win, there was like maybe like 25 fools from 18. Shit. And they all came in, and I was like, dude, for big old Roshas. And I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, but the, 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 and there was a clique in Baldwin Park called Smiley Drive 18. Oh, okay. So then fools moved into the east side, and they try to push their way into the north side. So we st- we started uh, we started going at it. Fools. Right. So, so the beef from the streets just happened to trickle into the system, though. And you just happened to be there. Just happened to be there, dog. And, and I'm telling you, there was beefs I didn't even know about, dog. And, and mainly what it was was just all, like, ramplas. I fought, a lot of the fools that I fought, I mean, later on, we became firme. Yeah, of course. Because they were just homies, and they were like, oh, this fool's witty. Like, because the thing is, in, in YA, it's all about, like, this guy saying something about you. But once you see this man's actions, you're like, this fool's not a bitch. Like, this fool's with the business. Like, right. why am I standing this fool's ground, you know? So a lot of homies actually later on were like, nah, this fool's solid. Like, you fools are some bullshit, you know? Well, that's why we're we're the way we are. Like, all that woofing online, woofing. This. Yeah, like, nah, fool. That's just w- unnecessary. W- 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 it's like that. When I see you, we'll see each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, like, I've, I've told my lady plenty of times, there are certain people that you will never catch me in an event at. Why? Because they have an understanding that if I see you, I'm going to slap the fuck out of you, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not even going to hit you. I'm just going to slap the fuck out of you. Yeah, yeah. And because I'm old school. I, I, you know, I was telling my, because my lady's like, why do you think like that? And I said, you know, that's the way I've always thought. Right. You know, I've always thought that real men, we don't, we don't react. When somebody like gets you mad, you're, you're reacting to, to your right. feelings, right? And to me, that's like female shit. Right. Real men take action. Meaning like, I'm going to, hey, you know what, sabes que? Let's go outside real quick. You don't need all this bullshit. Yeah, you don't like, need the big, don't need don't need the big show. Shit. We don't like, need the big, big show. You know, or, 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 what, or what's the problem here? You know, that's taking action. Reacting is like, oh, my God, my feelings are hurt. Uh, oh, lot, my God. A lot God. of cell warriors out there, homes. Yeah, like, that's not. It's that's the not internet, fool. The internet is yeah. internet's crazy, it's, bro. It's, it's a fucked up realm, but you know what? I feel like there's still a handful of people that are not like that. Yeah, of course, you know. Fool. And and it, what, what makes it worse is that that's the norm reacting that's why there's yeah. so many reaction channels that's why there's so many people you know because at the end of the day it's entertainment yeah you know so i've seen shit i'm like damn that fool eat shit because we love to see the next man get hurt yeah unfortunately when we get hurt it's like fuck why you what are you laughing at you know right <laughs> yeah right fuck that I ain't a bitch right 
Right, for sure. But it's just it's just in our culture, it's in our nature as as a man. We want to see the next man fall. Yeah, it's uh, up. sad. Sadly, it is me. I like to see the homies win, man. I I support any homies that are that are doing righteous and and you I'm know. The same way. And, and to me, like I say, if you good in your hood, homie, you good with me, homeboy. Exactly, exactly. So where when was the first time you even thought about you know writing a book? So the, the way this whole writing thing happened was okay. So I mean, obviously throughout my whole career as a criminal, I love to read. I love to read. Why? Because I'm a strong believer that. You could you could have muscles though. You got muscles all day, but you ain't got no brain. You're useless though. Yeah. You're just muscle. And if you're all brains, you ain't got no muscle, right? So I'm a strong believer of you gotta have the brains, you gotta have the muscle, but you gotta have the will. Will meaning like the heart, you know. And if you don't have all three factors, you know you're lacking yeah, in one for area. Sure. So I had a passion. I was an avid reader. I love to read different books. I read. Like over a thousand books from my whole incarceration, right? 48 Laws of Power, you know, different kinds of books. So, my whole thing with writing was 2009, I wrote my first book, which is this book, right? It's called Don't Catch the Recession Depression. And the way this thing is, and this is the first time I ever shared this story. So, okay. I'm sharing it with you guys on your guys' po- uh, platform first, right, right? Thank you. So, 2009, I got a good job. I buy my first house. I got my family. I had my first kid. I'm making good money, though. But well, where homies like us get messed up, well, I'll speak for myself, let's say, because I don't know how you know how you feel. Yeah, but of course. I feel like when you're in and out of jail all the time, you get comfortable. Like, I've been out for 10 years. Fuck the cops. You can't do nothing. That's how I was. I was like, dude, I've been out for three years. I'm on parole. Like, I'm good. I'm buying a house, right? So I'm thinking, like, everything's gravy. Got my house. Got my family. Nothing could stop me, right? But the thing is, I could stop me. You know, reality could stop me. Family, my criminal background. There's a lot of factors that go into One mistake. This thing. Exactly. Well, like you said earlier, one mistake. So the fucked up part is all my life I've sold drugs. I've sold drugs all my life, but I was still living a normal life. And, you know, one thing I learned is that you can't live on this end and that end. You <laughs> yeah, can't right. share. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. You can't right. do it. You have to either be all legit or all crooked. Yeah, there you go. And at this point in my life, I'm like, you know, I wanted to be a writer. I was like, you know what? It was 2009. I was like, you know what? It was the recession. Like you said, you know, everybody was getting laid off. I got laid off. I wrote this book. It was a good book, right? I put all my money into this book. And all this person had to do was just send the copy to the writers, to the the publishing thing, right? They were going to have me at this thing in USC with all the writers and um, the person sabotaged it. This is a person that I love, that I confined in. And, you know, I, I hated that person for that reason, right? And, you know, years later, I'm incarcerated because what happened with this book, this book flopped. Not one copy sold. I lost my family. I lost my kids. I lost my job. I wound up in prison for six years. Two years into my incarceration, you know, they, you know I can't see my kids, nothing. And I tell that person, like, why would you do this to me? Like, I will say, you know, a a job is a job, right? But to be a writer was my dream. Like, why would you take my dream from me? And the person was like, you know what? I just didn't want to see you better off without me. Because I knew that if you were to accomplish your dream, you'd leave me behind. That's what that's what unfortunately happens a lot of times. It's just like when you have people who they'll congratulate you. They want to see you do good, but they don't want to see you do better than them. Exactly. And, 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 And that's what it was all about. So I go to prison, I get in the shenanigans again, and you know, one thing about, I'll tell you, anybody that's on the live, on the thread, or hears this, one thing is to do time when you're by yourself, and one thing is to do time when you have kids. Mm. Doing time with kids is hard, you know, because I had had my first kid, and my other kid, um, Amaya, she was only like months old, so I didn't even get to know her, you know, and when I was in prison... I'm not ashamed to say it. You know, every Sunday I would sit there and I would write letters to them. But I would get them and I would crumble them and I would throw them away. My cell would be like, why you do that, dog? And I would tell them, you know, because if I keep contact with my kids, that's my Achilles heel. It's hard, yeah. When somebody sees that that's as my weakness. weakness, they're going to prey on it and they're going to they're gonna take me out. That's fucking sad, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so, the world we live in there. Yeah. For six years, I had to pretend like they were dead, dog. And it was hard. It was hard just writing letters and throwing them away. And they would be like, send that letter. And I'll be like, I can't because I don't want to, I don't know what to tell them. I don't know what to tell them as a father. And they don't understand 
that you know the life I'm in. You know they don't they they, they don't know. I can't tell them. But you know? also you also re- uh, wrote those letters as therapy. I would think, and, right? Yeah, every Sunday, every Sunday I would write my kids letters, and I would just be like, "Damn!" And my Sally would be looking at me like, "Damn, fool!" Like send that letter. Nah. And I'd be like, "Fuck no." It must have been much harder at that point to do that much time because you had got a taste of what the free world had to offer you. Not only a taste, I had, we we're buying our first house. We're buying. That's the first time I bought a pad. We we're buying a pad. I had a brand new car. I was working for Boeing. I was making like forty dollars an hour, dog. You weren't the one that had the door to fell off, right? That wasn't nah, your fucking nah. thing. <laughs> Dude, we, hey, I'm just sh- making sure, man. Yeah, just making sure. Though. How many airplanes did you crash on me, right? Nah, that, dude, I, I honestly, you know what it was? I felt like I just felt too comfortable. I got too comfortable being on the streets, though. And, and um, I was just, I felt indestructible. I felt like, you know what? I got a house. I got a car. I got a good job. Like, fuck you. you but dude. you forgot about the illegal shit you're doing on the side. Exactly. Like. Exactly, though. You, you, I feel like you get too comfortable. You feel like you're indestructible. Yeah, yeah. Like, fuck these fools. They can't touch me. Well, it's, the streets and are undefeated, homes. The streets are undefeated, you know? And, and that's why I, I, when I'm writing my second book, on my second book, the first line is that there's a thin line between ideology and idiocracy. Which means ideology is something you idolize, something you worship, right? And idiocracy is the act of being an idiot. So I feel like us as homies growing up, we idolize these people on the streets. Yes. These homies with yes. fucking Cadillacs. These homies buying houses, dropping bands at yeah. the strip clubs. That we become idiots, dog. We become idiots to the reality that that comes with a big fucking tag. It's because we don't see that price tag, fool. Yeah, we don't. We're, we, we're, we're blind. We're blind to that right? price tag. And also, when a lot of those homies were coming out back then, they're coming out on swole. Oh, we'll tatted up. Yeah, tatted oh, up. Oh, shit. They're hood stars, homie. Yeah. Hey, the homies got to do some time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All the, all, the, all the homies are gravitating to them. All the yeah. hyenas are gravitating. Exactly. So you're like, fuck, that's the worst that's going to happen to me. But you, you didn't know this fool was... Writing letters to his kids and throwing them away. Fuck yes, it. dude, the trauma, the, the, the trauma, pain you fool. deal with, fool. Like, and not only that, I mean, just the whole thing with the writing and, you know, like, fool, I've been, they've had, I've had contracts on my head, fool. I've had to go against my own rasa when I was in Hawaii. In prison, I've been in predicaments where they'll be like, you got three days to do this or you're done. Right. Right? Like, like. That's some real like, shit. That's some real some shit, real homie. Shit, yeah. With the people you just yeah. can't even say no to, yeah, right? of course. And, and to me, to anybody that hears this, you know what's even more harder? Coming home to a kid you don't know and trying to tell this kid, hey, I'm your dad. You know, this is why I wasn't here. And, you know, and to this day, both of my kids don't understand why I picked the game over them, dog. And they'll be like, dad, like, why didn't you come home? And I can't tell them the truth. I can't tell them, hey, you know what? I was in a situation where I couldn't do it. I tried to, but they'll never understand. Yeah, they won't They won't understand, understand that. If I kept that line with them, it'd be a weakness. It'd be my Achilles heel. And I never wanted to show nobody what they could pull, you know? So, I mean, it's it's a, it's a hard pill to swallow. And I'm, I'm living it every day. And thank God that, you know, now my kids do, you know, love me more. And, you know, I have a better relationship with my daughter. I, you know, when I got out of prison, she was six years old. So she looked at me like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, of course. She wouldn't go with me. She wouldn't play with me. Like it's kind of scared of you, like who's exactly. this guy? Exactly, who the fuck is this fool? And that's a hard pill to swallow, dog. Like, damn, you know. So, what did you do to start, you know, mending fences with your kids? So, mending fences. I mean, for one, I started taking baby steps. You know, baby steps meaning like, hey, you know what? Let's go play at the park slowly but surely, okay. and being open with them, being open with them. And you know, I have a sixteen-year-old and a fourteen-year-old, and they're teenagers, dog. So I tell them straight up, you know, like we just talk about different stuff, whether it's about boys, about being cool. You know, one of them had a situation where she was worried about being popular. Ah, I'm not going to be popular. It's cool. And I told her, shit out. You know, if you focus on high school and high school is all you have of being popular, you're going to be somebody who's going to just be living in those years. You, yeah. You're, you're going to be pregnant. You're going to peak in high school. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. My best years were in fucking high school. <laughs> I said, you don't want to be that. No, you don't. I said, you don't. I said, you want to shine in other aspects. Yes. And, I, and I tell them straight up. You know, there were situations where they'll be like, oh, well, this boy loves me and he won't. And I'll be like, look, I've been that boy. <laughs> and I said it just to hit. Yeah. You know, I talk to them straight up like that. I don't, I don't lie to them. I don't sugarcoat it. And and I feel like that's why we have a good relationship. Well, good. Yeah, you're using your past experience yes, to try to make exactly. sure they don't make I, those same mistakes. And, and I'm honest with them. I don't tell them, like, hey, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Tell them, you know what? If you're going to make a mistake, 
you know, don't look at it as like as a loss. Look at it as a as a learning lesson. I had an issue with my daughter uh, when when she was younger. Now she no, it's a completely different relationship. It's a pretty damn good relationship with her and I. Uh, that every once in a while she would throw that in my face, like, "Well, you were in jail all those yeah. years." Because I I, so my I, I didn't really get my daughter until she was about seven or eight years old because exactly. I was in and out of jail all exactly. those years. And they hold that. Yeah, they you hold think that, they remember bro. that, but they do remember that. Yeah, they hold. Now she doesn't so much because okay, I good. said. I've been here for 30 You're years now. Yeah, bridge. yeah, or 20 yeah. some years. I've been yeah, putting in exactly, work now. Exactly. But that was hard, bro. That I I I I'll admit right? it right here, bro. It was one of the one of the last fights we had and she told me something like that and to some hey me I don't know her, bro. I just started crying, bro. Yeah. I'm oh. I'm, I'm a grown ass man. I'm like and I'm and this is young girl. I'm probably like 33 years old, 34 years old yeah. and she just told me something and, I just fucking started crying. Cause I went, it, it feels like it hits you. Yeah, yeah bro. And, and I'm, and I'm a tough guy. I'm not, yeah. only, I'm not, you know, but it was like, you, bro. yeah, bro. I just, I mean, it just, the faucet went on. She fucking broke me, bro. She yeah. fucking broke me. But that tells me how much I love my daughter. Exactly. You know, exactly. And, and it shows you room to improve, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Which now bro. you're you know, where you're at, what you're doing, you're using your voice for positive. That, Absolutely. That's bro. Good. But, but I, 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 I know the struggle with it. I know how tough that can be, but, that's the beauty of, you know, being, being in America, homie. Being we can America. come from nothing and be something, and be dude. something, homie. Something. We can make mistakes and still come out of it and exactly. still be doing our thing, you know. Exactly. That, it, it's not where you start the game, you know. It's where you end it. It's where you end it. Exactly. And, and to me, you know, people say, what's the, well, what's the American dream, Gil? And I tell them, it's not, it doesn't mean you have to own a home, own a car, own this, all that. It means you're working Taking care of your family, homie. Exactly. That's it. Just exactly. feeding, the the clothing them, everything, and making sure that they have a better life than you did. Yeah, obviously. That's what I, I tell my wife. That's what I do. I always ch- try to do better for them than I what I had. Absolutely. You know, I, had this, I didn't have this, so they have this. You know, when I was little, we never celebrated Easter. My kids celebrate fucking Groundhog Day, St. Patrick's Day. I give it to them, you know. And sometimes I feel like I'm guilty because I give them too much. And even uh, my, my wife was just telling me recently because... Even for my sisters, I wasn't there for them, you know? So the way that I was showing love was by buying thousands of dollars yeah, of gifts, you. you know, for Christmas, right? And my lady was like, why are you doing that? And I tell them, you know what? Because I feel bad because when they were little and, and they needed me there, I wasn't there. I, I chose the game. I you chose, chose the prison, hood, homie, yeah. You know, and, you know, the way I look at it is like, I gave the my the game 30 years, dog. It was Solid. a lot of times, 20, like, 20 plus years in and I went to juvenile hall, I went to camp, you know, I went to prison. I, I stood solid, dog. I stood solid through it. So I look at it like, you know, it's my time. It's my time to live my with my family. Absolutely. And, you bro. know, I have what, like maybe 20 years? I the way I look at it, I have like maybe 20 yeah, years. Yeah, we're, we're we're more downhill than uphill, fool. Exactly. Straight up. So these 20 years, I'm gonna live good. I'm gonna live good. I'm gonna write my books. I'm gonna put a positive message. Why? Because I feel like I already poisoned it enough people. I've already done enough bad. But even when I was bad, I feel like I wasn't really even that bad. I feel like... Oh, you were that I, bad, fool. I, no, I, you were that bad, fool. I, I was bad, <laughs> but I mean, I, I feel like I kept a good a good note on it, right? Why, why? Because, you know, like, even though I went through all those stuff, I learned so much, man. Like, I learned things that I could never, I could never, like, pay for in college. You know, like they say, knowledge, and you can't get in college, for you know? For sure. It's, it's, it's stuff that, it's humbling, you know, it's stuff that, that teaches you, like, hey, you know what, I'll never... I never think with my with my heart. I'll think with my head, you know, because there's times when I'm so mad and I just want to let loose on somebody, but I'm like, nah. I mean, this is my feelings. Right. And and you know, it goes back to me being a reader. You know, when I used to read a lot, um, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln never like he would always write fucked up letters to people, but he never sent them. Oh, that's how he got it off his yeah, chest. Yeah. He got it off his chest, but he never sent it. Why? Because he didn't want his men to to have that against them. You know, and I, and I, I, you know, even when I became a supervisor, like I was a supervisor in, in Boeing, right? And I would always tell the people, you know, I want you guys to respect me because of what I do, how I carry myself. If I'm here early, you should be here early. Like I led by example. You and sure you weren't the one to put the door in for? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's a, we live in a hypocritical time, man. I think we've always had to a point. Yeah. But just gangs themselves are hypocritical. It's, uh, it's, it's a big hypocrisy. I mean. It is. It is. It, it, to me. It's it's like a big old charade, dog. Like yeah, I, I mean, is. I'm always gonna love the streets. I'm always I'm always gonna be from where I'm from. Yeah, I'm always gonna love it, but I mean, 
to me it's like this is my time and you know one thing that's crazy is when i was a when i was young being alone scared me man like i'll keep it real i don't care who's on the on the on the podcast who hears right. it i was young i i didn't you know when i was in ya like the thought of being alone was like fuck just me by myself nobody else everybody's spreading over there i'm right here oh my god yeah you know think it about sucked yeah, fool. but you know one thing is i'm glad that i went through all those trials and tribulations because you know it taught me to be with myself and i feel like a lot of people don't have that time to themselves because who's gonna know you better than you you know if you don't know yourself you don't know what you like you don't know what your flaws are and you know the more i started reading all the great leaders of the world always went by themselves they always would you know they, these fools are going crazy they will step away go to a cab and be like you know what i need to get in my thoughts i need to go to nature and figure out what i need to do what's my next move Powerful. and they did it alone you know people are scared to be alone they want to be in the crowd they want to be in the party nah i go to bars by myself i go to parties by myself and a lot of my friends and homies questioning like why are you always by yourself and i said because you know what this is my time it's my time to live and i'm happy alone you know well, when you were a kid in, let's say, in the hole in YA, you never got real down like, fuck, dude. Because, I mean, that it, it's tough enough being a grown-ass man doing with that. But, you know, you're a grown-ass man. But being a child that you were and you're in the... I in the, hated the, it. I hated it. When I first went to YA, like, all I wanted was to be a part of something, right? Because that's what we long for. That's what we you long joined the gang to be for, accepted. Yeah. You know, whether you want to admit it or not, we are gravitating to those people because we're all broken. You know, you don't attract, you know, how I say positive and a positive yes. makes a negative. That's the, you attract who you are, Yeah, for sure. you know, and the same energy you give out, you get back. So, I mean, I wanted to be a part of something, but when I really, you know, I'm, I'm actually glad that I got exiled from that, you know, because the way I looked at it is like being exiled showed me what, what it was. Like it gave me an outsider's perspective and I seen, you know what? Like, I don't want to be part of something that does this to our own people. I don't want to be part of something that's whole so hypocritical. You know, meaning like the firme raza, we're like the best of the best. But then there was days where, you know, there was a riot. I was left and I jumped in and no firme raza got in. All right. Like, where are you super firme guys? Not only that, but we went to prison. Me and all these guys, we wound up in prison. You yeah, know, because that's sure. where we're going to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I seen them in prison and, and, and in prison they're dope fiends, dog. Yeah. And you know what? Anybody that knows me on the live or hears this or will hear it knows I never touched a drug in prison. They'll be like, why don't you do drugs, Beaver? Why don't you drink? And I tell them, you know what? Because this is my punishment. I was in the streets acting like a fool, so this is my punishment. So I deserve this. Because they'll be like, oh, man, I'm trying to escape reality. You know, I can't deal with this. So why are you acting like a fool on the streets? Right. You know, if, if you can't handle that, why are you escaping here? You know, like, when are you going to face reality? Well, I'm sure it helped. It The the experience you had in the Youth Authority definitely helped you excel in prison. Exactly. Right? Obviously. But yeah. how did you turn that switch off? Because I could only imagine, maybe I'm just guessing here, that you had to become a cold-blooded person when you were in the joint, fool. Obviously. Obviously. You know, the, the, way, the way, one thing I'll say is um, a lot of people go through different stuff when they're growing up. And, you know, we're all quick. To talk about we won this and we knocked that fool out and this right. and that. When I went to Hawaii, I learned real young that we're not molded by our triumphs. You don't learn shit when you win. You know, motherfuckers remember Kobe because, you know, he was a winner. Right. But nobody talks about how many times this fool missed. How many times Jordan missed. You know, we remember for the we remember for the best. Right. But we have to remember that it takes practice, you know. Absolutely. So so we learn from when you fail. So at a young age, I said, you know what? This is one of my biggest lessons I've learned. For one, favoritism is not good. Two, you have to be ready to stand on what you believe in. Absolutely. And you have to be able to go against the crowd. And what if one day you're by yourself? A lot of people have never felt that. A lot of people have never been by themselves. Everybody's always been with an entourage. Right. You know, so when I went to prison, I was not afraid to talk, of, talk about something. And it wasn't favored. You know, there'll be a lot of times fools will be like, nah, 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 nah. And I'll be like, well, I don't feel like that. And they'll be like, well, try to persuade me. And I'll be like, you're not going to persuade me. This is what I stand on and this is what I believe. And I will go against the grain because this is how I feel. Right. You know, and, and since I had experienced it at a young age, I knew, you know, and, and, and not only that, but I was already seasoned. 
I'd, I I had seen these people grow up just like I grew up, yeah. and I could look at them and be like, "The fool's gonna break. This fool's doing this. This fool's doing that." And you become like a like a master at what you're doing. Absolutely. You know, there's there's chiefs and there's Indians, and it's like, what do you want to be? You know. So you know, a lot of people like I'll, I'll give an example. They'll say, you know, since I didn't drink, I didn't do drugs in prison. They'll be like, "Well, how did you survive in the game?" And I'll tell them. The way that I survived is by protecting myself, not only from my enemies, which were the blacks, whites, everybody else, but from my own kind. Absolutely. Why? Because my own kind will poison me. You know, that's why if you know me and you've been in prison, you'll know that I never ate or drank after a single person. If I gave you chips, you kept that chips. If you gave me a drink, I'll just be like, if it's not new, I'll be like, I'm good. Really? Very, I was very, very precautious about who I ate after, who I drink after. Why? Because you were poisoning. You were living in a paranoid life. You're, you're, you're living, you're living like Vladimir Putin. E- like. e- exactly. Why? Why? Because that's the only way you're gonna. You're if you really want to make it in that kind of environment, that's the only way you're gonna make it. It's, but it's a, you know, I hear a lot of times, you know, the schooling, the this and that, and if anything, from seeing what's going on in, in, in YouTube, everything, it's a lot of cutthroat, homie. It's, it's a lot of snakes. Cutthroat. It's a lot of like, you know, two you have to, you have to cover your. I would always say this when when you know because. I was indoctrin- indoctrinated in a certain way, let's say, right? So when I was lacing people up, I would tell people this. For every word that comes out of your mouth, you better have four or five words to back it up. Like, that's that's how it was. You seen me in prison? Like, I'm not this funny guy. I was super quiet, very observant. You know, I looked at you. I looked at who you're around. And, and you know, I always looked at the people who were flashy. People with big chains, you know. He's like, I got a chain now, but in prison, I never had a chain. <laughs> never, right. never. I never wore good clothes. I never wore brand new shoes. Never, never. Why, why is that? Why? Because when a, when a when a police officer or CEO sees somebody with a big chain, with with brand new Just shoes, like with a big old Archer's, he's selling dope. Just like the streets. That motherfucker's doing something. I was that guy just working out, quiet by himself. Mind his own business. You, you were like the paisa on the block who had the, exactly. the beat up Toyota, but he's the one slanging coca he's and everything else. He's the one else. doing the most moves. And that's what I was doing it for years like that. And it, you know what? And I never got caught until I told on myself because of my pride. You know, and I and I feel like in life you have to learn these lessons. Now, what do you mean you told on yourself? Literally, the, the way it was, was I was put in a situation where I knew something was wrong, but it was out of my race. And, you know, like, we're, 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 we're Mexican. Though. We're, we're brown pride. You know, your pride is all you have. Your ego. You know, you're egotistic. And right. Now I'm no longer like that. But I was like, I know this is wrong. And I know this is that guy. So what I did is I did something some way, somehow. I won't say everything. You know, but I gave it to this person. And I, like, kind of, like, booby trapped it. Right. I said, you know what? This man is going to deliver this for me. To s- but when it lands from point A to point B, if it's not the way I did it, I know this man is going to fuck it. He opened react. it. Yeah. And when it got to point A to point B, it was open because it wasn't the way I sent it. So now I go to these other people and I tell them, hey, you know what? With the woo woo, this man been tampering with my shit, which is unforgivable. You can't do that. We're different races. And, you know, it was my it was my ego. It was my pride. I should have just been like, hey, you guys do that. You know, yeah. you guys handle it, but it was just my egotism, you know, my pride. He, t- he my, touched my shit. Exactly. He I, you know, my shit, yeah. And, and I told that man, like, you guys better put hands on that fool. Or I'm going to move on this fool, which was one of my biggest mistakes because the, everybody knows that when you're in that kind of environment, it's meant to you stay in the cut. You have to stay in the cut. Right. You're never supposed to show face, expose yourself. And I expose myself because of my vulnerability, because of my pride, you know, and, and that costed me. A lot of repercussions, you know. I ended up getting snatched up, all kinds of shit, you know. When, when, in, in, for years, people tried to go against me, and then that's when I go to the hole. I go, move, I get moved to another yard, and I figure out I'm my worst enemy. I'm the guy who's gonna take me down, yes, not sir. these other guys. So I start watching what I say. Start, you know, thinking like, hey, you know what? How much is my ego worth? How much is my pride worth? You know, because we're we're a people who are very prideful. Oh my God, yes. Well, e- ego is what destroys us. Yes, exactly. And, and if you think about it, you go back to all, like the greatest people who've ever led. Feelings are weakness, dog. Feelings are to be a feeling is meant to be felt, not to be thought. 
when 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 you put a feeling into a thought, you wreck because you're no longer acting out of rationality. Right. You're acting out of feeling. You start saying shit that doesn't mean shit. You start acting irrational. Yes. You know. So all these lessons I learned, I you I keep it for my life. You know, and bring it back to my book. It's like I lost everything. I go to prison and I get out. I'm out and I'm fresh out. What year did you get out? I got out in 2014. Okay. I go back to selling drugs. You know, I go back because Otra I, vez. yeah, because I don't. The thing is, I've never lived normal. I've never been like, oh, I need five hundred dollars. Fuck that. You know, lip. That's how I always lived. I'll be like, the paycheck is just so the cops don't fuck me. Or the PO don't exactly. Fuck you, right. The real money is here. And long story short. I'm making a delivery with this person, and all my life I've never wrecked, never been busted with drugs, nothing, been smooth. We get into a situation, we get into a shootout. I end up fucking crashing through a wall. This other guy flies out through the wall because of his stupidity, and you know that's when it hits me. I'm like, you know what? I've been in the game so long, I survived so much, but what's gonna take me out? It's not even my mistakes. It's gonna be some other idiot that makes a stupid mistake like this. So is this really worth it? I get the drugs. I get the money. I take off. I go where I go, whatever. Tell them I'm good. I'm good. You keep this. Don't even pay me. Keep it. I'm good. I'm walking straight. One of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, working nine to five, making four or $500 because I'm a con. I can't get a good job. I got no skills. Right. You know, so now I have the opportunity to go do construction, go do what I have to do, whatever way I have Work. to walk. Right, but it's hard. Yeah, it's hard, and I'm bur I'm making burly ends meet. And my girls like fuck you, you're a loser now. It's oh, all bad. That's tough. It's all bad, right? Oh, that's tough. But you know what? Me being seasoned the way it was, I think about the four. The book that always pulls me out of my my mode. Forty Eight Laws of Power, though, and the thirty three law is death ground strategy, right? So what this law is based on is when Cortez came to to conquer the Aztecs. Yes. You know, what he does is he knows that there's only so many of them. And they're not going to be the Aztecs. These fools are fucking Machica warriors. They're going to kill everybody. There's only so many Spaniards, right? So what he does to make these fools fight to the death, he poke holes in the boats. And they're like, the boats are drowning. We got no way out. It's either win or die, homie. Oh, so these soldiers with Cortez, they fight to the death, dog. Because there's no turning back. No turning back. Shit. 2014, I get out. And like we were talking earlier, I have gave so much time to the prison system. And I know I'm getting older. I only got so much time left. What am I going to do? Am I going to put my dreams on hold, get a job, or do whatever? And my dreams are going to be a hobby. Comedy, everything's going to be a hobby. I say, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not going to do it. I put myself on death ground. Strategy though, I get fucked up job after fucked up job, get fired, get like fucked over completely. But I knew the only way I was gonna make it was like this. That's dope, and I man. made it though. That's I made dope, it, brother. I, I made love it. it. I love it against man. all odds, dog. It, it, oh, physical copies we sold out so many, and I brought this book because I was like, dude, this is where it started. It started with this book that looks like a fucking pamphlet, dog. But you know what? I never give up on my dream. So that's why I tell people, don't give up on your dream. Don't put it on the back burner. If you have a dream, act on it now, though. For sure. Don't wait for the perfect time. There is no perfect time. There's not. There's, There's not. There's not. There's not. Like, you get in the studio. You didn't wait till your kid got old. No, it's, it's... Or shit like, got right. You jumped on yeah, it. Yeah, let's do you it. You gotta jump on it, dog. And, and I think that's what we lack a lot. We lack As that Latino. discipline. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We lack we, we that conform. discipline. We lack... Conform. We We... We just say we're going to manifest it. Well, it's good to manifest it, but you need to you make, make a moves, plan. Though. Yeah, like I, I talk to homies sometimes. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And my thing is like, okay, well, you want to. What are you doing? Make are a you, move. Yeah, make, make a move. move. Make, make a move. Get, get the wheels going. It doesn't exactly. have to go fast, yeah. but at least. But you're also, what a lot of people don't see is that how you were how you were talking about Jordan and Kobe, you know, uh, Kobe and Jordan are, are known to be the first in the gym and the last one out, right? Exactly. They're, they're exactly. burning, getting it in to exactly. try to get those shots in. And what people don't see with you is all those jobs that you're taking that you don't want to do, and you're probably like, fuck this. But yeah. the mentality there, there of- jobs where I wasn't even getting breaks, dog. No lunch. My lady would be like, that's fucking illegal. And I'd be like, nah. This is the you're kind of job I need. I have to work this you're because you know what? Dues. I'm an ex-con. I got no skills. I got nothing. 
but I have this. I have my vision, though, and I, and I never give up on it. And now my mom is proud of me. My kid is proud of me. And I'm like, dude, people see me on the street, and you're like, hey, you're that cholo guy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, though. Young Beast Comedy, good. homie. Young good. Beast Comedy. It got feels that. good to give back not only to to my kids, but to the raza, though. The, the culture, fool. The culture. Get back to the culture. Give the, get to the community, carnal. Yeah. Now, I've seen, I mean, I follow you obviously on TikTok, Instagram, and I see you doing all these venues, man. Yeah. How, how cool is that going from, you know, you were doing not even bars, you're doing any, I, like Anything, I said, bro. I saw you doing every event, yeah. any event. You give you give beats a mic, I'm going to go for it, yeah. homie. But now I see you doing actual, you know, Black fact factory, yeah, big dude. shows, dude. And you know what's funny is that even that, you have to see what's your strong point, what's your weakness. My, my strong points are venues. Okay. My weak points are are fucked up places like car shows. I can't do that. I feel like I'm drowning. And even when I hooked up with my lady, like I would tell her, ah, I never, I never fucking drown. I never. And I told her the other day, you know what? I do horrible at these shows. She's like, what the fuck? And I said, you know what? The other day, some guy went up to me and told me, you're not even funny. And I said, you know what? Some instances, I'm not. Yeah, you know of course. What? Because there's days where, like, I can't, you know, uh, what people don't understand is when you do comedy, you. You feed off the people's energies. Absolutely. So if the energy shit, you can't give shit. But what I'm learning now is being grown, being mature, is accepting when I fail. You know, because yes. in prison, when I went to prison, you know the, the you know the people who laced me up. My first celly was a uh, funing spantos from La Puente. I, I barely got it away. I'm in the shoe with this fool dog, and the first thing he told me was the first thing to being a homie is that even when you're wrong, you're right. <laughs> like that's so like crazy right like <laughs> right like and, you know, all my life i lived with it dog the other day we're texting and this fool he got he's living his dream job he's over there in another state regular thing. guy he, man this fool's living it that's what's up and he messaged me right and he goes hey bro i'm sorry i fed you all that bullshit right oh when you, you yeah what we can use and we can't You're right and i said you know what all those things that you told me stood with me it was like my Bible. It's like what I kept every day. And I was like, even when I'm wrong, I'm right. Which helped me. Which helped me to accept rejection. Because, you know, like, uh, you know, right now, um, when is it, babe? In April 16th, when I'm talking to the Riverside people? Uh, April 26th, I'm going to talk to uh, Cal State Riverside, right, babe? RCC. I'm going to go. They bought a bunch of my books. I'm going to go as a public speaker. Oh, look at and you, And talk homie. about my book, dog. Congratulations, Imagine. brother. It, it's yeah, out on that that's shit, love, right? that's love, bro. From being a, a, a con to an icon, dog. Make sure to give us a shout out over there. Hell book. yeah, for sure, dog. <laughs> and, and you know what? I, I was nervous. I told my lady, like, I don't got nothing to say. And my lady was like, you have such a story, Yes, dog. you do. Try up to triumph. And you and what I really wanted to focus on when I go up there is just tell them, like, you know what? Growing up in the system... I had muscles, I had brains, I had tactics, and I had manipulation. But the way I overcame everything was through faith, dog. I never lost faith. And, you know, people say don't lose hope. Fuck right. hope. Hope leaves a space for doubt. If you hold on to your faith, you overcome anything, nice. dog. And that's what got me out of Hawaii. That's what got me to prison. When I went to that fucking crazy home, I had faith I was going to get out. That's right. You were in I a beat fucking it. crazy home yeah. for a minute. Dick. I forgot about that I shit, beat it. bro. I beat it. I beat it because of my faith, dog. Because I never lost faith of who I was, where I wanted to be, dog. How'd you keep that faith? Because a lot of people would have lost it a long time ago. It, you know, I, I, would give, I would give credit to my mom, dog. My mom is a very strong believer. She's very religious. And, you know, she would always say that one day, you know, her dream was that we turn our lives around. Shout out to your mom, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Miss Zapata. Yeah. Zapata. Zapata. That's, that's, that's my mom. That's my mom, she, she indoctrinated us with that faith, dog. And I would tell her every time she'd come see me, I'd be like, man, stop, man. Like, done. But I'm she getting, wouldn't give up on you. She wouldn't give up. She's watering, now, the, putting the seed in watering, watering. And, and you know, she's a strong woman because, you know, like I told my lady, I'll share this with you right here on your platform. I actually, uh, my mom, she has arthritis uh, on her whole back. Just recently, I go to the doctor. They hit me with that bullshit, dog. I have arthritis on my back. Like, I'm fucked, fool. I'm going to be fucked. I call my mom and I'm like, fuck, my mom back's hurting. She told me, you know, stop being a fucking pussy, dog. Man up and do what you have to do. And I'm just like, mom, like, I need this. And, and my mom's like, my wife's like, she ain't going to give you that shit. Because my mom's a strong woman. My mom knows that if she gives me that little way out, I'm going to take it. Right. 
Right. So I start thinking in my head, if my mom could live with this, yes. if she can work with this, why can't I? Mm-hmm. So that's, I mean, I'm living it. I'm living it. I'm living it. And it's it's painful, you know. And, and I'm not going to lie. When they told me that shit, I was like, fuck. Because the way the doctor told me was like, you have arthritis from your back to the upper back. And in a couple of years, you'll be in a wheelchair, dog. Oof. Like, you're done. And I told my lady, I was like, fuck. Like, I'm fucked, dog. But I started thinking, you know what? This is just going to be gasoline to my dream. Right. That just means I have to push harder. Absolutely. You know, it ain't giving up. It's like, fuck it. I just got to run faster. Now, back to the shows. The lowrider shows, I could see that being tough because it's, it's, a, it's a lowrider crowd. Yeah, they're yeah. Not, people are they're, over. You're yeah. like begging for attention, bro. Yeah, exactly, bro. It's they're hard. Not, and and right. even when you go to like some of the rap places I've gone to, if if you're not the headliner for they ain't clapping, they're they're, oh, fool, and especially so the homies high. like who's oh, this yeah. battle right here? He, yeah, <laughs> people don't understand. You know, when you're a comedian, that fucks you up. I'll go home and my la- I'll be fucking drunk as fuck. My lady be like, let that go. Right. And, and I'm so prideful, I can't let it go. But now what I'm thinking is like, you know what? I'm not gonna put myself in those situations. If I can't excel in that, yeah, you, you know, you're like I'm not. Why am I gonna lower myself? Not course. even lower myself, but just. Harm myself. Yes. You know, it's like fucking stabbing yourself in the neck. You know, it's like suicide. You, you're going to go lose over there. Exactly. For what? Why? For what? $100? Fuck those $100. $200? Keep them. Yeah. Uh, one thing you have to do, it's almost like, a, I guess, like a baseball player or basketball player. Hey, that was last night's game. You Let can't sit there and dwell on it. I got so many more games of this year. I'm it's so it. hard to do that. You know, one thing I've learned in comedy is um, I tell my lady, like, I'm a kill. I'm gonna kill because I feel it. I feel it. you feel it in your bones, dog. It's like, it's like something unimaginable, dog. It's it, it's a feeling that I would say, I've never felt before, you know. Because as 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 a as an inmate, you know, I used to strive to be, more. I wanted to be immortalized. Hey, you know, my guy. dream was to be an idol. Like yeah, I be. wanted somebody to be like, I always murder this fool. And, and you know what? When I when I got to where I got, I was just like, dude, this is it, like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, fuck hey. this, dog. Like, I mean, no disrespect to nobody, but I'm just like, if this is the top, like, what the fuck it's is this? It's just another sell, homie. I'm good, dog. So that's why, you know, now that I have an outlet, now that I have a voice, now that I have a platform, I tell people, hey, you know what? I'm always going to be a homie. Oh, yeah. I got nothing against people who look like me. It's just, I want to help you to do better. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I talk to people, I talk to some kids that I talk to now because I, I donate my time at different institutions and I tell them, hey, you know what? Back in the days, I used to give these fools sacks. Hey, here's a sack, fool. You know, make right. some pedia, flip it. Now I'm like, fuck that. You need a gun, you need a sack, I'm not going to give you that shit. But you need work boots? I got you, my That's boy. That's right. I got you. You need a fucking bus pass? I got you. You need fucking knowledge you can't get in college? I got you, my boy. I'm not going to... I'm not going to poison or stir my culture, my rasa down that drain no more. Yeah, because we were we were giving down, going down that drain. Exactly. But, but I always say those homies didn't know any better either, bro. We didn't. You know, but we do. We're blind. You know, I, I always say, I always tell people this, you know, because when once you get so far up the game, you realize that your job is to hand off the torch to the next generation. Mm. Where we fucked up is we gave the torch to the next generation, not caring, not giving, and they shit it on it. Yeah. But but we can't be mad. Yeah. We can't be mad because the next generation didn't know no better. They weren't in school no better. They didn't care no better. They were influenced by hip hop oh, and all this crazy homie, shit. Majorly. And I'm and you know what? I knew what was gonna happen. Because when I was in jail, like in 2010 and all that, we predicted it. You started seeing it. People were seeing it. The way the homies were running, the way people were talking, were like, we're it's gonna go to shit. And it's gone. You know, it, you know, they say, Oh, the captain goes down with the ship. That's a lie. When the ship goes down, everybody jumps off that motherfucker, you know, and only very few really care, you know. So I, I talk to homies all the time, whether you're, I mean, the other day I was in Temple Street, all kinds of homies, all like from that gang. Right. And they embrace me. That's I go right. to Long Beach. They embrace me. I've gone to Florence, different hoods. They embrace me. And I sell them. It's just the the way I carry myself, the way it's just. Me, I'm just another person just trying to make a move, you know, and, and I'm making it with you. And I'd rather, I'd rather see somebody that looks like me win. Absolutely. Right. Oh. I, I don't have no ill will towards nobody, you know, and that's another thing, you know, because through everything I went through in YA, I'm not going to lie. When I went to prison, I was very resentful. I bet. Fool, you had a I hated to be. my people, dog. I hated my people. But for some reason or another, 
I wound up in that position where I was representing my people. Right. I was the face of the people. And I started thinking either I'm going to be a hypocrite and make my ship sink or we're going to swim and we're going to we're, we're going to be out there. Right. So I learned to put my differences aside. I learned to put the better of everybody else. And, you know, it, it's something that most people can't do. Yeah. Well, your, your trials and tribulations, you use them to make you a better leader, brother. Exactly. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that because in life we need people like that. Absolutely. Brother. We need people that can make a difference in our community. Just in our neighborhoods, you know? Yeah, it, it's... Well, just like how we screwed up our neighborhoods little by little, we are the ones that can fix exactly. it little by little. Which, exactly. In, in every Only head. us. Only us. And you know what? Even with my book, I swear to God, this is something that... I mean, we've sold books in Vietnam, the Philippines, That's what's up, oh Las boy. Vegas, well, Washington, Louisiana, all that shit, oh, babe. You see it there, All huh? kinds of places. And you know what? We're, we're Now I'm working on deals to donate them to jails. Oh, Because I feel yeah. like I'm selling them for 20, 20 bucks in person. But, uh, you know, I've donated some to the Riverside Library, Baldwin Park Library. I'm going to go to San Bernardino. And my lady's like, why are you doing that shit? And I said, because you know what? The people who really need to read this can't afford $20. Right. The people who really need to read this are living dollar to dollar. And if a kid who's having a hard time can go to the library and check this out for free, my, I can sleep better. Now, is that going through like... The be- obviously to the beginning process and where does that book end off at as far as your story goes? So the way my story goes is I wanted to write it all together, right? But when I'm writing this, like people don't understand is like it's what I went through was a really hard experience. You know, it, it, it was a, a phase in my life that I wanted to shut down forever. I didn't really want to talk about it. Why? Because I felt ashamed. I felt, felt like a victim, you know, and I feel like to me being a victim is weak. But once I really, really sat back and I talked to my lady and I like I, I, I started thinking, I was like, I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor, I'm a striver. I'm somebody who went through a hard thing and overcame, you know. So I, I set out the first book. I wanted to put everything together, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this first part because, you know, I remember when I was in prison and when I was in Hawaii, I would read these big old books, Yeah, you know, and. I'm not going to lie. They're one of the books was Don Quixote, right? It was like okay. fucking 500, 1,000 pages. Yeah. I don't remember shit. I read in that <laughs> book, right? So I wanted my book to be small enough and, and understandable to anybody, whether you're in sixth grade or you're a college level. And I wanted you to be able to read it and remember it. I wanted you to be able to pick this book up and be like, damn, this is what he felt. This is what he meant. This is what he went through. And as far as the Amazon, I um, the way I'm setting it all up is Amazon Kindle has so many chapters, right? Right. In the paperback, there's extra chapters, extra information that's not in the Kindle. I'm working on okay. the audio book, which is going to pretty much open this book up and dissect it. It's going to tell you what I felt, what I went through, what this each chapter was, you know? Yeah, I'm looking here. I asked him. He told and said, slow down, cowboy. Don't get ahead of yourself. First thing you got to understand about why is the shooting game consists of any person of a gang disrespecting your dead homies or family in any shape or form. Fima Raza doesn't eat, associate, or talk to any levas. Fima Raza, just a whole list of one rule after another after another. And that's another thing, Beavs, that people don't understand, especially the youngsters, fool. We join gangs to get away from our parents' laws and regulations, schools, and all. And then you go to YA, you go to prison, and you're, you're going to follow somebody's rules and regulations. Yeah, you're always going to be minding somebody. I always tell homies, like even the young homies, they'll be like, ah, oh, fuck the law, fuck this. But when you go to prison, when you go to Hawaii, you're going to mind somebody. You're gonna mind There's somebody. always going to be a, a, a structure that you're going to follow. Like it or not. Like it or not. Folks. So would you rather pay taxes out here, be normal, <laughs> than go in there and, and, you know, who knows what yeah, can happen. He, here, out here on the streets, the worst thing you can do for a holiday, you, you get fired, homie. Exactly. Over there. <laughs> you get taken out, though. <laughs> yeah, you get fired. And, and, and people don't understand that, though. It, it, yeah, it's, 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 it's reality. It's cutthroat, like you said. It's cutthroat, and it's, it's like, what people don't understand is, like, you could be good. But if somebody and let's say your party just takes a shit, you all take a yeah, shit. Yeah, you wrecked, tell me. You all wrecked. You can wreck by another person. And you know, that's that's what people don't really understand about that. It's a it's a very dangerous game that we idolize. But once yeah. you're there, you're just like, damn. Yeah, what I get myself this, into. Yeah, this is what I idolize. Like and, and you know, like I said earlier, you have to be at the point where you can't 
show no weakness. My kids are weakness. I think my kids, I every day I used to say, you know, I don't have no kids. Why? Mm. Because if I had to stab somebody, me having kids would be like, damn, I can't stab this fool because I got kids, you know? You know, you, you have to really think about it. You know, you have to really focus on what you're doing. You got to shut down who you are as like a human being, bro. Exactly. You know, and, and only the strong Let's put survive. the number up there, Chris. Get some calls in here real quick. Yeah. Let's see if any, somebody asked, uh, what's your Y number, Beavs? My, well, hey, <laughs> okay, I'll say this. The only reason why I don't declo- disclose most facts in my Y numbers because I talk about a lot of true facts. So I always, one thing everybody knows is um, as far as my stories, there's a lot of stuff that's real, but I always change dates, times, and facts. Of course. Because I, I don't want to fuck nobody over in that aspect. But, I mean, that person sends me a message, I'll send them a personal, like, this is my YA number. Because it, it, it would disclose certain things that I don't want people to know. P-Funk said he's a 5'8", 803, huh, boy? I was a 7'8". Oh, that's that right. I yeah. was a 6'3". See? Yeah. I was a 7'8", came back, came back as an 8'0". Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. At a certain time, the numbers really started flying. They and I, they do a ninety day evaluation. I wonder what they're shit. gonna do now, bro. I was talking to uh, Nathan Hawkman, who is most likely gonna be the next district attorney. I interviewed him, oh, right? Shutting the tune out systems and all that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm still nobody can give me an answer. Like, what are you gonna do with all these juvenile offenders, bro? Because the new law, I don't know if you knew it, in the state of California is wherever the juvenile committed his crime, he does time in that county. L.A. Yeah. County is going to have more murders in most yeah. places. So what more are they going to do with all these? You, can't, you, you, you shouldn't be housing guys who are doing murder time in juvenile hall. It's not but made for that, do. bro. But they do. Yeah, I, but I think what's going to happen is going to make it even worse because you're just locked it in a is. cage, bro, like not, literally. I mean, not only that, but, you know, people don't understand. Oh, Los Padrinos, a lot of these places are shutting down, though. They're shutting down, and they're just going to start sending them to prison. That's how you, I hear about the, all these people getting out from prison. Is it, To me... Honestly, my opinion, what they're doing is they're making room for the next wave. That that, that can make a lot of sense. That, that makes a lot, a lot of sense. sense. Why? Because you know, at the end of the day, we're 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 money. Yeah, we're money. We're we're a bed count. We're a head count. And that's what you're it is. You're a cash grab. You're, you're you're cattle, bro. That's what it is. You know, they, there's 33 prisons in the state of California, and why? Because we're money. Any other state doesn't have that many prisons. Only California, and that's not even including the privately owned. There's CCFs right. and all these crazy shits. Right, just real facilities, 33, that's a lot. But I, I think eventually they're going to definitely have to have some kind of system where you house these guys. What what kind of system, because, I mean, you were in the in the youth uh, system for a long time. What kind of system do you think we need to actually help rehabilitate some of these young guys? I, I, I mean, I would say this. A lot, of the, a lot of the kids are growing up just like we did, right? Yes. And they're just, they're misled, coming from broken homes, whether they're, you know, going through some stuff, physical abuse. It, it all comes down to the home. You come down to who you are. You know, some people have great homes, but you're lacking something that puts you on the streets. Right. So I would say we have to do more programs that reach out to the youth. And I'll give, I'm not, I'm not going to say where I went, but I went to this place where they had counselors. They had counselors. They had people that went and volunteered. But, you know, these are Tesla driving motherfuckers that don't know nothing about these kids. Right. So when I went in there and I started talking to them and I was like, hey, you know what? I told them straight out, anybody don't want to be here, you're free to go. Get up and go. It's cool. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want my time. But if you're here, I want you to hear me. And I started telling them, hey, you know what? It's all gravy. Going to juvenile hall, boxing your enemies, doing this, putting in work. But what happens if one day you find yourself in this situation and I tell them what happened to me and I tell them, you know what? You might think I'm a warrior. You might think I'm a winner. But you know what? Society looks at me like I'm a loser, dog. That part. I got nothing out of all that. I'm scarred for life. For what? For something I don't own. Not only that, but I mean, I could never really be normal like you. I could, you know, like, I'm pretty much telling them, like, save yourself the journey. Save yourself the trip. You know, they, and I'll, I'll say one more thing, you know. Me and my wife, we live in Rialto. Bought a house out there, whatever, right? Nice. I had a situation where in Baldwin Park, I got into a big away issue with the cops. Bam, bam, bam. Do her thing. I go to prison for years, and I always thought these cops hate me. They hate me, dog, because they put me away. They did this, fuck the cops, all that shit, right? right. I get pulled over in Rialto. 
you know, I'm a regular guy. Do my thing, man. Here's my license, whatever. You know, this was get out of the car. Whatever, hey, get off. Whatever, right? They take my car because they want to be heroes. I tell my lady, don't trip. We're going to fix this. Let me give them documents. They're going to be good. I go to the police station and the captain and the main guy. What's his name, babe? The chief? Chief of police? Chief of police. Yeah, the captain and the chief are the guys who sent me to prison for years. Dog. When they were over there. And, and when they hear my name, they're like Beaver from Baldwin Park. They come out. They're like, what the fuck? Are you serious? They're like, what the hell happened to you? And I was like, you motherfucker sent me to prison for years. I did seven years on that case. And I used to think that they hated me. I thought they hated me, right? This, I've never been hugged by a cop in my life. This motherfucker breaks me four arms and said, I'm so happy. You're doing better with wow. your life. You wrote a book. You're on, okay. not on that track. And I told him, why were you guys on me so much? And he goes, because even when you were a kid and we're busting your ass then, we knew you weren't like them. We knew you weren't dumb like them, you know? And no disrespect to nobody, but we knew there was more to you than what you were doing because I was dumbing myself down. Right. You know, I was like, ah, you know, this is it. And now to see these guys, they were cheering for me. The same all, all this cop, time. All this time. I I did a fundraiser with them. You know, I we talked to the youth now, and I'm just like, who would have thought? The same fools who put me in cuffs put me on a stool, dog. Like that's crazy. You don't you don't see you don't hear about that. Yeah, well, yeah, you don't hear or you don't see it. You don't have that interaction. But just like with me, the the minute I stop breaking the law and stop acting a fool, guess what? The cops stop messing with me. Yeah. yeah. So it, the magic is. Not breaking the law. Exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, you're still every once in a while going to get a, uh, you know, a bad experience with the cop. But just like us, that we don't like to get stereotyped for what one homie does and, and spread it to everybody else. Same thing with them, fool. That's why, you know, people give me heat about, oh, you're pro this, you're pro that. I said, homie, I'm pro a good life, carnal. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, one thing that people have to understand is, you know, like I was telling you about the whole ideology and idiocracy, right? Yeah. The beginning lines of my new book are that. I said, I've, I'm a strong believer that there's a thin line between ideology and idiocracy. Absolutely. Meaning you idolize something so much that you no longer use rational thinking. You don't right. think right. You don't act right. You don't feel right. So now you're using idiocracy. You're, 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 you're an idiot. I mean, you're when, fucking up. You're acting ignorant, though. Know? When you're a young man and... Um, and you have nothing. You came from nothing. All of a sudden, somebody hands you the hood, homie. And what? This is mine now? Yeah, you get to claim it like everybody else. When people hit you up, I'm from over here. That gives kids, like, something to think. Something that, to live for. Something but, to live but, for. But, but I tell kids this, dude, because I've talked to different kids, and I tell them, hey, you know what? I'm just like you. Just like you, I sat in that chair just like that, though. And I'm going to tell you, that chair is going to always be there. Yes. There's going to be another body. Whether you leave, you come back, there's going to be another body right there. Yes. So just know that, you know, because I have somebody that I, I know somebody that I talk to and, and, you know, he's a kid. He's coming up and, you know, he doesn't believe that, that, you know, literature and everything's good. He's like, ah, fuck, that's for white people. And I tell me, hey, bro, right now we're raza, dog. And the white man or other people look at you like you're ignorant. Right. Why are you giving them more power to saying that we're ignorant? By you not educating yourself, homie. You're just making yourself look more ignorant. I said something. Get educated, though. There's nothing cool about not being able to read. There's nothing cool about not knowing your cultura. There's nothing cool about not knowing your rights, though. But it seems that's that's where we're going, bro. It seems like especially our younger generation, it, it, they're going more backwards than forward. Like I told you earlier, you know, we handed the torch, and you know what? This generation burned the fucking house down. We can't be mad at them because yeah. they didn't know what they're being handed. They didn't understand it. They didn't understand the seriousness of it. And you know what? What they're doing is going to literally erase who we were, which is cool. It's like the dinosaurs, dog. The dinosaurs, you know, you fucking go to the Braille Park tar pits and you see a dinosaur that's it that's, that's what we're gonna be yeah we're, homies we're, gonna be little dinosaurs yeah, you know? that's it Braille tar pits homie we're, but it's good as long as there's people who are out here who are doing good dinosaurs will always exist dog you know it, it's how you keep your legacy alive you know you you could be so negative you could poison so much there's always gonna be an antidote i always tell people you know for every virus 
It's gonna be an antivirus. I I had a a few guys in here, uh, Baldwin Park. They call it Baldwin Park Movement. Obviously yeah. not from Bolin, but mm. how do you feel about all those guys now representing? Honestly, to me, like uh, I tell my lady, you know, like on a street level, a lot of people would like that. We don't get along, you know, because we're from the streets, yes. right? It's, but me as a man, I want to see anybody who looks like me, who's brown, to win. That's what I want. I want to see him win, whether he's black, brown. I want to see anybody who's been in my shoes. Who's felt what I felt? I want to see him win. I want to see him do better, dog, because I feel like we we've been oppressed too long. Yeah, well, it's we, our we time oppress ourselves to a lot of push times. up. But you know why, right? Because we can't, you know, as Latinos, we can't see the next man do good. Yeah, we can't see shame. it. We can't see it. We're so used to airing out the next man's dirty laundry. Oh, I know this about that guy. I know this. I'm gonna do this. But in reality, what are you doing? You air out the next man's dirty laundry. All that saying is that you're not capable of holding a secret. There you go. You're not <laughs> capable of, you know, I can't talk to you in confianza. Yeah, you're getting views. Yeah, you're feeling a certain way. Yeah, you got to be careful. What are you days. accomplishing? Now, yeah, now, I, now, my now lady's days. role. She always tells me that. Watch what you say. Watch what you yeah, do. Yeah, my wife is. I think women are the, are the forever. masters at that. It stays forever. Make sure the phone's not on silent. I had it on silent the other day, uh, Chris. You guys want to call in 747 279 8109? 747 279 Yeah, my wife tells me the exact same thing. I mean, but nowadays it's it's a sad world, bro. People are recording everything you do. Whether you have a conversation with them, whatever it is, it's like there is yeah, no confianza with nobody nowadays, huh, boy? Say, B, let Lucky post up the first live you did, fool. Oh, no. <laughs> I was so fucked up in that live, dude. I was so fucked up. And you know, people don't understand this. I was supposed to go do comedy. So a lot that of the night? things, uh, the, the way it happened was we had canceled. We had canceled the thing. And then I was partying with my family, drinking. And then last minute, he was like, hey, you know, let's do it. So I was drunker than I thought I was. And then a lot of the stuff I was supposed to say were jokes. But I was so faded that I literally buried myself. Yeah, I, I, I want to let you go on that day, fool. Not, not only that, <laughs> but I had sponsors, fool. I had sponsors. Uh, I was sponsored by two different companies that cut me that day. Oh, I, really? I was it, Literally, I had just got sponsored like maybe two weeks prior. I met the guy out at the comedy store and told me, hey, you know what? We fuck told with you. Told him the story. We like I got you. We like it. Well, fuck with you And I was trying to save that shit And it took a shit Oh yeah dude. But but that was You know people Forever haunt me for that But you know what I don't, I don't get mad You know why Because that taught me How to act Oh yeah right of course We all done some stupid shit On the internet bro Everybody bro and, and, myself. And, and I don't get mad Because you know what That's why we Me and Lucky know we, we, I told him Hey you keep those clips up I don't mind Because that will forever Remind me of how much Of a jackass I was Go ahead you know? run it Acted like a fool I remember we talked soon after that, fool. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I would, I would give you some coffee. Say, caller, caller, who's this? Oh, OG Rocha. OG what's Rocha, what's, what's going doing? on, my man? We got Beaver in the house. Talk to us, my man. Yes, sir. Hey, Beaver, you know, it's so good to hear you, brother. Um, Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, you know, when I was a young kid, I'm 58 now. Um, I paroled in 1988. And, you know, before that, I had no one to reach out to. I had no one to... Uh, kind of go in a direction like, hey, man, I'm messing up and I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk you know, to or, or how to get educated or anything like that. And eventually, you know, from county to prison, no doubt, um, that's all I knew. That was my whole destiny of life because I didn't know anything else. I remember I would go to the football game and watch guys play football and I would think, man, I wish I could play football. But I didn't have the grades. You know, I didn't have anybody encouraging me to, to go in the right direction at all. So to hear you say what you're saying about the youth, the juvenile house, man, I, I dig that, brother. Yeah. I truly do because I was once upon a time that child that did, had no direction, no leadership. And then you get to the, you know, to, to the to the joint and all that stuff. And that's all they do is give you direction. Exactly. I, exactly. And I tell myself, if I could have backtracked my time four or five years ago, I, I would have had better direction in my life. You know, today, uh, I'm a troquero, 33 years. Congratulations. Huh? There were, there, yeah, but they were the only ones that accepted me being an ex-felon. Man, there's nothing so, wrong you know, with that. Yo, you, you know, but my thing is now, now I'm older, I wish I would have picked up another trade. Even to this day, I wish I had another trade, another, uh, anything to fall back on, to be useful with my hands, to have knowledge in, in different areas of jobs, and I don't have that. So, 
by you reaching out and sharing and, and sharing your life, man, you know what? Respect to you, brother, big time. Thank you. I really appreciate your call. I really appreciate it. Big yes, sir. American, American Cholo, gracias, bro. You always have a good platform, brother, you, and I, I enjoy listening. For sure, Rocha. Well, and, you, and that job you're talking about, Rocha, somebody wishes they had your job. That's a boy. critical job, though. You know what I mean? People don't understand. They, they, look, they so, look at so like truck you drivers. Wife, like they, yeah. Truck drivers you, are you critical, know, though. They bring, yeah, you guys sure. give us the neat, the stuff, the goods. They supply we need. us, humble, yeah. I mean, so. You know, you know what the trip is? Years ago, okay, I've been now 33 years, right? And I had ran into an old correctional officer one time, probably like two or three years ago. And I remember before I went to the joint, he told me, when are you going to straighten up, man? You're always up to something. You're always in trouble. And he knew my family and all the above. And believe it or not, those words never left my mind. Nice. So after 30 years goes by, I happened to run into him at a concert. And I, and I said, hey, are you so-and-so? And he says, yeah. And I told him who I was. And I said, you told me words over 30 years ago that I've never forgotten. That's I said, crazy, you man. said to me, when are you going to straighten out, man? And believe it or not, I didn't have an answer. I just looked at him in shock, like, I don't know. But, you know, all these years later, what somebody said to me so long ago, it never left me. So by you sharing your teaching and, and you know, your upbringing and, and all that you went through, it, somebody's going to, it's going to stick. Yeah. Somebody's going to remember your word. Somebody, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, man. Orale, pues, you all have a Thank good you. night, man. Thank you so much for calling. I appreciate it. No, it, def okay. it definitely sticks, man. Just like the negativity bullshit sticks, the yeah. positive stuff sticks. It's, it's a seed that you're dropping and you you're a credible messenger um you got the look you know you could be using this for negativity like yeah, exactly. hey homie here's a sack here's a strap yeah, yeah, hey homie exactly. fuck them bottles woo, woo, woo. like you know start running game yeah. on the homie and them guys are looking to somebody like you like Let's come up <laughs> yeah this is a god homie this is the older yeah. homie He's but but you know i tell people put the same energy that you did it to a negative into the positive homie. absolutely you know like uh I'll, I'll say certain things used to bother me so much but then I think, you know what? I'm comfortable with my own skin. I know yes, who I am. Fool. I know I walk around everywhere. Yes, I do what I do. Fool. And you know what? I'm proud of the man I became. That's why when fools talk shit, it's like, fool, like, come on, homie. Yeah, we, like, literally. It's literally. a Mian way. They fucking, yeah. they pee on themselves. I mean, literally, I, you know, when when I hooked up with my lady, it, it was it was really hard to transition from being a gang member. Because that's what I consider myself, a gang member, yes. to being a public figure now, you know? There was a situation, you know, my, my wife knows, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm heated. I go on a podcast and... Person calls me out of my name and oh no, we don't I, do you know, my, no, 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 the, uh, a caller, a <laughs> yeah, caller calls me out of my name and he's like, oh, whoa, 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 drop that. And I tell my lady, you know, don't trip. I message this person, I go to this place, yeah, this location, can't. though. I'm strapped. I'm you strapped. Can't be doing my that, lady fool. is laughing, dude. She's all like, how do That's you a feel? a nervous laugh, trust me. No, no, she looks at me, she's like, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, you are. Goes, an idiot how for do that, you bro. feel? You're strapped at IHOP. Yeah. Nobody yeah. showed up, nobody yeah, came. Yeah. But and, and the worst part is, like, hey, you know what? can't be letting these people do Fool. no what if they show up then beaver's down he's in the joint doing life homie he got his that's it I'm, i mean no that's what it would you know, be it would know, be uh, you got yours true but it's like what well, that's when you realize what matters though. yes you know fool, what, absolutely what's homie. important and like i tell my my lady and i tell the kids i tell whoever i speak to whether it's positive negative whatever whatever you choice you take even when i was on that side on this side whatever you want to call it stand by it yeah. Stand firm by it. Yeah, to me, it's you know, like, so, you know what, fool, you don't got to go looking for it. Yeah. If it comes to you, it happens. it's otra cosa, way. Exactly. If it, it comes it to you, like, all right, fool, I'm here, it is what the fuck it yeah, is. Yeah, exactly, me. exactly. And, but talk to me a little bit about that. When I first met your wife, she was your girlfriend at the time, yeah, yeah. right? Um, I'm, I'm very glad to see you guys doing your thing. She she seems to balance you out a lot. And, you know, the, the great cliche is you know, behind every good man is a great woman, homie. Honestly, honestly, you know, I, I used to think like... Um, be like, man, ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. Like, you know, but now I feel like, you know what, I need that. I need that. I need that structure. I need that balance. We I need somebody do. to keep me. Que te agarre las orejas, yeah, wey. because you know what? It feels up to me. I'll be doing body shots and doing lines, <laughs> right? I can't be like that. I can't be doing that. I can't, I can't be doing body shots. Okay, no, right? I can't, be, can't be doing lines. Dude, the other day we, we, we were uh, going through my wallet. Dude, right. Some fool I gave me a whole sack. And I was like, what the fuck, man, babe? Uh, because hey. you know and i was just like dude so i have to be you know you have to be careful because yes. with, with, with the whole being uh, you know who you are now is like you have to be responsible you know it's you, like you definitely do it's to me this is like being in power it's like is it, fame is it's hand in hand with power only certain yeah. people can handle it 
only certain people are meant for it. Absolutely. You, know, you misuse it, you're abusing. You're oh, it's it's going to get you. It's going to get you. Wreck. And that's how you hear so many people being exposed. And like we were talking about the whole thing with Lucky. Like, hey, you know what? That day I acted a fool. Right. I acted a jackass. And as a man, I fucked up. I fucked up that yeah, day. It's- it is- caller, caller, who's this? You got to use the ring the ring sound over there. The whoop, whoop. Hey, hello, Beaver. What's up, big dog? Hey, Cubo, Marco Cholo. What's up, homeboy? And Beaver. Talk to hey, us. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes, Can sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hey, Beaver, I got two, um, two questions. The first one is, how do you feel about when Vatos be with their homeboy, um, their homeboy from the hood, their lady, when they get busted? Hey, hey, Chris, hang up on this loser. I already know who this is, fool. <laughs> Hang up on this loser. Uh, don't worry about that. That's, that's that's another troll of America, fool. Uh-huh. He, 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 was, he was trying to set up the pitch for you to sit there and say, well, this and that. Well, this and that. I mean, yeah. hey, everybody does what it does. It comes with the territory, dog. You there know, you it go. Happens. It happens. There, there you go. I mean, the people who really are your friends, I will say this. The people who are really your friends, they're your friends, dog. Yeah, for you sure, know? homie, for sure. And, and, there's, and you have to figure out as you get older who is your friend. No, because to me, I don't throw that that word friend out there. No. I have plenty of homies. I have plenty of associates. But I have a handful of friends. There's people, you know, my homie Rumbles from Morovia, my homie Saboy for Tortilla Flats. I haven't talked to in years. But when we talk, it's like we've never missed a call. I got you like that. You know, yeah. that those are real friends, yeah. To me, to me you it's know? the homie, uh the homie uh Wino from Pacas, uh Largo from Pacas. I wanna see you win. Yeah, right? the, these are homies see you that lose, get arrested. These nah. are the homies that'll call you and fucking you ain't talk to them in fucking months. Hey dirtbag. What, what are you fuck? doing? Yeah, yeah what, exactly. What, and you exactly. guys and you guys are, You know, because as, as I feel like as men, we we measure our friendships by days we spent. That's not it. You know, friendship is measured by by memories and, and hard times you overcome. Absolutely. You know, because you know, a house is only as solid as as its foundation. Absolutely. Though. I'll say this: you got a fucking weak ass foundation, the house is gonna take a shit. Yeah, for sure. You know, fool. so when you have solid friends, real friends, and you know, one thing I'll say is like when I hear a friend that got out of jail, doing twenty years, whatever. Hey, the first thing I don't tell him, hey, here's a sack. No, I'll be like, here, no. my boy, you need some money for clothes. Right. Hey, you need a job. Hey, you right. need this. Why? Because, you know, there's going to be plenty of people poisoning you. Yes. There's going to be plenty of people stirring you that way, homie. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't see the distinction. I Like, I, same thing. I might be able to count all my friends on my yeah, five fingers, exactly. bro. I'm the same way. And, 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 and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. All day long. For yeah. homies, yeah, I got homies for days. For days homies right? homies for days. Exactly. But exactly. Pero, pero amigos, no way. Amigos, a, a friend... A homie's gonna be a one that you're partying with at night. It's, 11, it's in, eleven o'clock, and that fool's like, "Hey, fool, let's go buy another pack. Let's get." Yeah. And then I gotta work. Like, fuck that. Let's roll. Fuck That's your work. homie. A friend's gonna be like, "Hey, hey fool, you gotta, drink. yeah, fool, hey, go hey, wait, you got. I'm taking you home. Now, nah, fuck that. You're not taking. Exactly. Nah, fool, I'm taking you exactly. home. That's exactly. a friend, fool. Exactly. But that doesn't come on too often, homie. It doesn't. It doesn't because you know what? We, we and then what's worse is that when we're in those times, we don't see it. Right. We don't see the difference, you know, because I used to drink in bars for years. I used to drink in bars and people would see me there drunk and other people buying shots. Hardly any of those people I even talk to no more. Yeah, yeah. They're just Why? Bar because f- I'm not there. They're the I'm bar flies, there. fool. They're the bar flies, Cardinal. Exactly. So you see who is really a friend. And, you know, I tell people, you know what? I'm never going to give you poison. I'm not going to poison you. I'm going to tell you to do better. Right. Because there's so much stuff against us. Yes. Society is against us. The government, whatever. But you know what? It's are you going to fight back or you going to leave yourself just lay down? You know, who wants to lay down? You're not going to lay down. Nah, fight back. Man, we... Put up your dukes and give it a fight. So when uh, when's the next show you're performing at? Uh, my next show that I'm going to be doing, I got a show actually March 28th at the Stand Up Comedy Club in the city of Bellflower. It's going to be me, Jay Valentino. Oh, nice. Um, it's going to be... Um, uh, what a partner, Chris Aragosa. It's a good venue, like concrete, all kinds of people. Been that's there, you fucking know? hey, that's dope. You could just now your name is around these it's guys that've been doing it for dogs, a minute, homie. Bigger dogs, you know, bigger dogs, and you know, I I just like we were talking about. I just did a laugh factory with uh, I, the, saw, I saw. Shout that. out to the homie George Perez, man. You know, this is one of the realest homies I ever met. When I met him, he was straight up. He told me, hey, you know what? I don't fuck with just anybody. But when we start fucking with each other, I promise y'all fuck with each other. This man fucks with me tough. That's right, homie. Messes me, tell me, hey, do this, do this. And I I put out my best act for him the day um it was at the Laugh Factory. What day was it, babe? March twenty second or March twenty third? 
second, no? 20 seconds. I shut that bitch down, dog. Shut it down. I did nine minutes, but it was nonstop hits, homie. And I go up to him, fool, because, you know, he's like my OG in comedy. He's your mentor in I comedy. I go up to him, and I was like, hey, fool, hey, like, how'd I do? And he's like, you ain't doing it for me, dog. You're doing it for yourself. And I was like, damn. Hearing it from somebody like that is yeah, like, I'm climbing sure. up. Which is good, you know, and... Who do you try? Who do you try your your material on? Do you try it on your wife? Or? I try do my lady fool, but you know, it, I'll say this: stand up is hard. I wish I would have been a rapper, homie. Like I would have been like shooting guns and rapping. It's, it would have been easier, right? But stand up is like a whole art in with himself. Right. Not only that, but it's a it's a big uh, area. Like everybody wants to be funny. Yeah, hey, I, I heard it's one. Hard. Today. I heard one today. Let me see if I can make you laugh, homie. Shoot it. Why, why did the chicken cross the road? Why? Because the other chicken said, "Vente pa acá." That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Babe. That's funny. That's funny. Because the other chicken said, "Vente pa acá." Hey, come on, come on. That's funny. I, that's I, funny. I stole that from TikTok today. My wife said, "I saw that on TikTok." <laughs> nah, but that's for hey. But you know what? I'll say this: it's how you deliver it. Though. Yes, it's how you de- delivery is big, fool. Delivery is big. big. I've done jokes in places where I'm just like, uh, and it, it doesn't land. I done the same joke, acted it out more, gave it more, and it fucking kills. It's just how you say it. And you gotta and you gotta practice the delivery on it too. Practice. You know, I'll I'll tell anybody who's trying to get into that field, you have to give a hundred percent. Don't you know, cause you know, shout out to Concrete and all the homies that I, I started with a lot of these homies, right? And you know, this homie he he's blowing up, dog. Shout out to Yeah, his man, right? selling shit out, dude. That's selling beautiful. That bro. Shit out, dog. When we first uh, we started and and you know, we're talking, you know, I gave him a certain advice. He gave me advice and we always kept it real. And you know, one thing I noticed is the advice I give, I don't take. <laughs> so one day we're talking and he tells me, hey, bro, you were the one that told me if you want 100 percent results, don't put in 20 percent. And I was like, damn, homie, it's like that was me. facts because you know what? I started. I, I I wouldn't write material. I wouldn't do shit. I wouldn't do. You're just trying mic. to freestyle it up yeah, there, yeah. like it's hard. It's hard. But I will say this: learn your wing because I do write. I write a lot and I say joke. But I I when I'm up there, it's just it, it, either some of them are gonna go, some are not. Right. You know. So it just depends where you go. You know. And right now I have these two shows: March 28th um, at the Bellflower, uh, March 30th in the City of Whittier at the Sage uh, Bar. How long are your sets right now? I'm, I'm pushing anywhere from like 9 to maybe 10, 15 minutes. I could do more. I feel like I could do more. But um, this is what they give me because these are not my shows. Of course. My, my show, is, which I'm personally inviting you and Chris right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Is my comedy special June 21st at the City of uh, city of Commerce at Stephen Steakhouse. Oh, I love the Steakhouse. I'm That's telling you. Even hey, better, brother. Even hey, better. Hey, and, I, and I tell people because we're like, you know, you know, one they, thing. They're doing a whole comedy thing right there? We're gonna, okay. The way we're doing They always do comedy and different stuff, right? Okay. But the way I'm doing it is every. Uh, this is my fourth year in comedy. The, the go You have to have goals, though. Like, whether yes. you go or not. So I told my wife when I met her and we're everything. If I don't make it in five years, I'm done. Not gonna go past that because now maybe I should focus on writing. Maybe I should do something else, right? But every year I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm be- seeing bringing bigger crowds. The first year was at my gaze. I brought 150 people. Oh shit! Second time was 200, then 250. So I told her now my goal, 500 people, 500 people. And the, and she's like, you're not gonna do it, you know this and that. But you know what? I need that. I need somebody who put doubt. Because that'll make me push harder. And people don't know this is I used to be a drug dealer, though. So the way I'm selling tickets is like I was selling drugs. That's homie. right. You buy two, I'll give you three, homie. Like, I'm going to... I'm gonna, Now, the steakhouse, how many people does that place hold? It holds 500 people. Oh, okay. Which has never been packed out to that limit. So I told my goal. God is my witness. I told my lead. My goal is to pack that shit out. Have the biggest show that motherfuckers ever made. Why? Because I want to make total history. Well, we'll, we'll give you free advertisement yeah. over here. So send, Hell yeah. Send me some reels and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. We'll put on Instagram. We'll put Hell it on yeah. here. And I'll go for sure, homie. I, I, I can't pass you. up a good joke and you. a steak, homie. I got you. And it's going to, no, and I, the way I set it up was I got it from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Perfect. So you guys could eat dinner. Yeah, yeah. You guys could dance. As long as it's dinner, fool, not dinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dinner, dinner. As long as it's dinner, yeah, fool, not it's, dinner. It's going to be good. So you guys going to have dinner, drinks. And then at eight nine o'clock, that's when the comedy show goes, and then they would have a DJ too. Okay, so it's gonna be a All right. solo volo, and we're inviting. I'm I'm inviting everybody who's ever made an impact in my life. That's you, right. Hoodstocks, 
West Coast Graffiti. You've been in my life. You you contributed to That's me. That's right. You're going to be there. It's That's gonna right. be like the Cholo Grammys. If you ain't there, where the fuck are you at? If you ain't there, you might be Leva, fool. Exactly. You, you might not be Firme High. Hey. It's Firme Raza, fool. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's just gonna be epic. Homie. Okay, what's the date again? It's gonna be June twenty first, um, at Steven Steakhouse. Doors open at Steven seven. Steven Steakhouse. Fifteen dollars. Nice. We're selling tickets for fifteen dollars. I could have sold them for more. Okay. But I told my wife, I I want no excuse. For you to go, you get dinner, you get free when, when are the tickets going to be available to serve They're already Ryan? available. Where, Eventbrite or something? On Eventbrite. It's going to be, the name of the the comedy show is the Con to Comic Eventbrite. Comedy Show. Okay. Because I'm always going to be a next con, but I'm now, I'm a comedian. You know, I'm a, I'm a comic. I'm, I'm an icon. I'm making better choices, paving the way, homie. Yeah, when you get, when this live uh, comes down, make sure to leave a message on the on the on yeah, the, on the I'll comment put, section I'll, I'll put and, and just say Thank it there you. and leave and put the link to the event right yeah, there in the comment yeah, section. I'll pin it yeah. and uh, I'll pay for my tickets, yeah, homie. No, I'm not, no, I, no, I, no, no, no. Well, personally inviting you. Yeah, I want to see sure. you there, right there. I just want a nice Look. seat, homie. Yeah. I want a nice seat, homie. I don't oh, want to be. You, I don't want to be in the corner by the shitter, fool. Nah, I'll be like this motherfucker. This place is nice, though. Oh no, yes, Steven Steakhouse. It's a nice place. People like Willie Varsena, different comedians fluffy all my yeah. folks have show shit out nah, so dude. me to me it's an honor dog like to be on that platform no for sure but at the listen you're already done enough not to even think about quitting bro yeah. you, you got to look at your gains and how much you've come and how much we as a as a culture and community have come bro yeah. because you were there when i was pretty much starting everybody yeah, yeah, else exactly. there and Bro, see look, blow up. Yeah, nah, look, 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 look what we're doing, pay, fool. So you, you're off. seeing the hard work That's paying true. off, carnal. That's true. So we as a community, okay, Concrete is selling out because we as a community are stepping exactly. up and want to watch the shows, exactly. fool. Exactly. It, it's not it's not the weddles, it's not the brothers, yeah, it's yeah. the rasa it's going the rasa and supporting. Going. So now you have, like, look at Santa Fe Spring Swap Me, fool. That place is like, it's the cracking club every Friday, That's every Saturday. I'm going to go sell my tickets. I told my lady, I'm going to go. She's like, oh, you're crazy. I'm going to go because yeah. that's where my people are at. That's where they're at, fool. They say, they say so raid where the roaches are at. I'm going to be selling raid, <laughs> homie. Cucarachas are going to fall, homie. Uh, They're going to call me fucking 82, homie. Hey, see, 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 see if you can put the link up there. I don't know if it'll, it'll show it. If you can put the link on the on the live comment section after the event, oh, yeah. right? Somebody's asking for it. Put it on, babe. We'll see. We'll see. You might have to yeah. release it, Chris. And, and and it's only $15, though. No, that's you know, cheap, They were bro. telling me to go 20 25 yeah, It should have been at least 20 uh, It should have been a solid 20 but I, I want, I, I look, even with my book, dog, I want it, you know, everybody to be able to obtain it. You know, I don't want you to be like, oh, fuck, you know, $15, dinner, drinks, and free parking. Yeah, no, no. That, that, you won't feel like a superstar. You must come in on a steak, way. You're going to eat good. You're going to dance because they're going to be a DJ. Shout out to my homegirl Joker, you know, from Casablanca. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm glad that I have this platform, your platform, and uh, my platform. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm able to reach, you know, other hoods. Yeah, like, you know, Casablanca, homie. these people are in Riverside, right? Brace me, dog. Open arms, guy, come yeah, get me. Yeah, fool. I went, you know? we went out there too to Paris and all that area. Nothing but love, fool. Nothing, Nothing but, but love, love homie. Shout out to all the homies, IE Riverside, Man, all you that. You wouldn't think it, right? Yeah. Like, oh, shit, right? Well, nah. back in the days, we'd be like, you know, like everybody, fool. Exactly. Like everybody, exactly. fool. Every, everybody's trying to look down on somebody else because where they're from. Yeah. But nowadays, it's more like we know what the struggle we came exactly. through. We know exactly. all this shit. It's just, it's the same song and dance, just a different hood. Fool. Exactly, and you know, like I I, I will say this, like what I tell the kids is like you only see your two feet, yeah. you don't see past that two feet, you don't see past that alley, you don't see past that trash can. There's a whole another world out there, yeah, dog. a big beautiful a world, big, fool. beautiful world. Yeah, and that's why a lot a lot of people don't see it, but that's that's why that's why I love what you're doing, Bees, since yeah, day you. one. Thank full. you for having and, me. And, and I appreciate and, it. Man. And I remember having this conversation with you, right? When I don't know young. if you remember. Yeah, when right? I first started, yeah. We had this conversation, and this was off air, I believe it was. And I told you, you have a good story. But the only way it'll be a great story is if you're a success. Exactly. Because I said, if you go back to jail, you're this story don't mean shit. You're a number. It, you're yeah, nobody. this story don't. It's just another. The homie was doing Could good. He's back in. But at the at the pace that you're at, at the lane that you're in, homie, it's a great story, yeah. homie. And I hope that it continues to be a great story. Thank and I don't you. see why it wouldn't be, brother. Thank you. So I, I want I want to thank you for coming on our platform. Uh, shout out to you and your wife, homie. Thank and you, uh, shout out to my wife. Uh, well, and like I said, we'll advertise the hell out of it. And uh, I'm gonna talk, talk to my wife. We'll put it in the calendar, carnal, and we'll get a steak. Go over there, show people where they could find you. My name all is that John good Beaves stuff. Comedy, um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. One of my next high speed chase on 605, baby. I shoot that <laughs> shit.
All right, players, we are yes, out. Yes. We will see you guys tomorrow on What's the Word? The homies are going to be on. And then I've got another one on Friday with a G Baby, I believe it is. And then we got one on Saturday with Change Map for Life. We over here getting it in. Appreciate you guys bringing us into your home, into your car, into your tent. Shout out to all you guys, man. We're out. Thank you. That was good.